that this defense first is a load of crap in baseball. It is. Offense wins baseball games. If the Blue Jays scored nine runs every game, right? what would their record be after 162 games? If the Blue Jays scored six runs every game, what would their record be? This is the 10 Minutes with Andrew podcast. Before I throw it back to you, the MLB Power MLB Major League Baseball Power, Power rankings, rankings came out this week. And I like having a look at those to see mostly who's at the top of them. Yeah. Right? Uh, our beloved Blue Jays. Yeah. How many teams are there in the MLB? 30. 30. Yeah. So they are sitting in 24th out of the 30 teams. And that was uh, two spots down from the previous week. They were 22nd. So they were 24th. Um, and I'm just going to read from uh, the Bleacher Report's summation of the Blue Jays. Uh, the Blue Jays have yet to post a winning streak longer than four games this season, and that's still true. Uh, and that lack of momentum has them trending towards being potential landscape-altering sellers at the deadline. With Vlad Guerrero Jr., Bo Bichette, and Jordan Romano, closer Jordan Romano, who still can't close a door, all one that's year away point. from free agency... They could potentially join rentals Kikuchi, Justin Turner, Kevin Kiermeyer, and Danny Jansen on a, in a full-scale fire sale. So we're into June. This is June the 2nd. June 2nd. The Blue Jays have to figure out, are we actually going to do anything with this this year, or just maybe we, we, we need to start looking at selling and retooling? They, well, yeah, they should be selling right now. So what are we doing today, my son? That was a really long way well, today, to get back to you. What are we doing today? We're going to do a report card. A third of the way through the season, we're going to do a report card on the Blue Jays and give them a grade. Oh, okay. So we're going to do the position players. We're not going to do the pitching. No. Uh, we may do that another time. Also, just want to mention this series against the Pirates. Yeah. Not yesterday's game, but the game before. They wanted 14 innings. Which was a tough game to watch because it was two teams that couldn't score any runs yep. until the 14th inning. Another another article I read by Rob Longley of the Toronto Sun. Yeah. I think they won 5-3 in that game. Five, in extra three, innings. Yeah. They went 14 innings. Um, most of the runs they scored were that extra guy on second base to start the uh, extra innings where you get a free guy on second. Yeah. There's been basically 19 innings where the Blue Jays have scored one run against the Pirates. Not counting those extra ones where they give you a guy on second. Yeah, yeah. So they've they've scored one run effectively in 19 innings. So yeah, and they got destroyed by the Pirates Ross, yesterday. Ross, it's time, my friend. Yeah, and they got destroyed by the Pirates yesterday. I'm okay with Ross having the fire sale. Yeah, I'm not okay with Ross rebuilding the team because this is what he built. Yeah, and he's already proven he can't build a winner. So if you want to sell off the assets and get us some good, then depart and bring someone in that can build us a winner. Yeah. Right. So we're doing a report card. We are. position players. And you got them ordered there by the number of at-bats. Number of at-bats. Okay. So we're going to give them a grade. Let's go through the list and give them a grade. Yeah. I'm going to only give a few a grade because I don't watch, I don't have watched much Blue Jay baseball. They're hard to watch, but no. you can certainly give a, give a comment or two. Yeah. All we're right. Go, we're going to start yeah. with Vladdy Guerrero. My favorite. My favorite. So Vladdy is uh, hitting 292. That's very respectable. Uh, 25 RBIs and five home runs. Yeah. He's had 10 doubles and 64 hits. So for me, if I were to give a grade, I could give a grade based on their performance overall as a Major League Baseball player. Yeah. And a a grade based on what my expectation was. Right. So for Vladdy, I'd probably give him a B plus. B plus? Yeah, because I don't expect more than that out of Vladdy. No, I mean he he hits for average. He's up to two ninety two. I don't. That's a bit high for him. I think I probably dropped down a little bit by season's end, but he is not producing runs. No, he was supposed to be another Shohei Otani type and Aaron Judge type run producer. Another Vlad Senior. But based on where we are right now on June the second, he's on pace for seventy one RBIs on the season, which is not what we were promised. No. And 15 home runs, which is also not what we were promised. Now, people kind of keep saying, he's going to get it going. He's going to get it going. Okay, well, this is June 2nd. So, at what point does this start? I don't know. So, B plus. If I were to rank him based on what everyone told us he was going to be, yeah. this is a D. Yeah. 
Uh, I'm going to give him a C. Okay. Which is just an average You're, you're a hard marker. Because yeah, the, the, don't let the average fool you. He doesn't produce runs. But another part of that, which isn't really his fault, he gets on base. Sometimes he makes stupid mistakes and gets picked off, and that's his fault. But yeah. sometimes he gets on base and he's in scoring position. No one can bring him home. Because the Blue Jays don't have any offensive runners in scoring position. So that's really not his fault. But I give him an, an average C. Okay. Well, they brought back the home run jacket for him, too. I don't think he's worn it yet. No. No. So that's not working. No. All right. Vladdy, you're uh, you're kind of in the average area with us. So that brings us to? To Bo Bichette. Shortstop Bo Bichette. Now, we're not even going to talk about their defense. No. This is more an offense thing. So Bo Bichette is up to 241. Yeah. 25 RBIs and four home runs. Uh, not known so much as an RBI guy, but got to get his hits back up there. Uh, we could use a f- bit more power. Yeah. Uh, for Bo, got to give him a C. Oh, really? Uh, I got a D minus here. I told you, you mark hard. I do. I'm a little bit more lenient. But... Just because, like this guy, like this is a disappointment. This is a shocking disappointment as it comes. I mean, this guy's usually your best offensive producer, and he hasn't done much. You're right. If we're looking at term one, which is start yeah. of the season till end of May. He has been a very much so a disappointment. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go with a C minus. All right. I go with D minus. And you're going to D minus. All right. All right. Uh, it doesn't get any us, better. Nope. Brings us to George Springer. Can I start here? Yeah, you can do it. Uh, F. Okay. That's an F. George is struggling 204. That's actually up his 204 it batting is up, average. Yeah. And 12 RBIs and four home runs. He's been dropped down to the seven spot in the lineup. Yeah, I actually I saw a video on YouTube about the Blue Jays. Now they're struggling. And one of the things they talked about is this guy, is, this George Springer was like the, the biggest signing like a couple of years ago. And makes a ton of money. A ton, like $25 million a year, I think yep. it is. And this is just the proof, I think, that he's getting too old. He's getting too People old. People say that. Maybe. I don't know. I just think he's struggling right now. Like, like they, remember, remember when um, Josh Donaldson, like in 2018, was struggling, and then they had to get rid of him because he was just yeah. Th- this is what he's going through right now. But Springer's a leadoff guy. Yeah, right. That every now and then can pop one or two for you. I'm not giving up on Springer just yet, um, but he is making an awful lot of money. So based on what he's making and what the expectation is, I have to fail you, George. Yeah, me too. Your first term, you have failed. You must do better, or you will not be proceeding on to grade 11. No. <clears throat> so then we get to the next one. Dalton Varsho. Dalton Varsho, who, Ross Atkins said, has turned it around. Apparently so. He's hitting, turned it around. He's hitting what? 206. 206. He's turned it around. He's turned it around, 100%. What, what did he come from if 206 is a turnaround? Like, probably 106. No, he was his batting average was higher than that last year. I think what they're referring to is he leads the team in RBIs with 30. And leads the team in home runs with 10. Yeah. So if I were pro- project those numbers over the whole season, he could have 92 RBIs and 31 home runs, which would be a whole lot more than you ever would have thought we'd get yeah. out of Dalton Varsho. So yes, right there on the run producing and the power, he's getting an A from me. Oh, I-, I gave him a B. The batting average is still too low. Uh, he's a great defensive fielder, but I'm not about defense first. There is no power in the, from coming from the Blue Jays outfield. And that's no. a problem. Um, yeah, I gave him a B just because of his RBIs and home runs. So an A and a B. His average up. But you're such a harsh marker. I am a harsh marker. Oh, my goodness. If I had you as a teacher, I'd like fake being sick every day. <laughs> Get out of your class. Well, I am sick, so. Okay. Um, that brings us to our fifth I'm going to let you Jay. do these, these five and six. I'm okay. starting with Justin Turner. Justin Turner, the big free agent signing that was going to fill the Brandon Belt void, mm. which uh, wasn't much of a void to fill because Brandon wasn't so hot either. Turner's up to 217 again. That's up because yeah. he was really struggling below 200 for a while. Uh, what are we at for, uh, for a tw- bit there, 20 he, RBIs and four home runs? For a bit there, he was like their biggest offensive hitter. Yeah, he was. He started the season on fire, yeah. and then he just disappeared. Um, my expectation was quite a bit higher for Justin Turner, although he is 40. So if, if Springer's too old, what's Turner? Huh? Yeah. But Turner's. I don't think Turner's making what Springer's making. No. Uh, Turner, I got to give him a a D. Yeah, he's just you know if if he could pick it up and get us a few runs batted in, we may actually score a few more runs and have a chance to win a few more ball games. Um, number six, IKF Isaiah Kleiner Falefa. Yeah, so he's a utility guy. Utility guy, two sixty seven. He's a pro. 
Uh, 17 RBIs, four home runs from a bat that doesn't hit home runs. I'm, yeah. o- I'm okay with that. He gets an A-plus from me. Wow. Yeah. Didn't expect anything close to this. You actually feel like you might have a shot at a hit when he comes to the plate. Yeah. Yeah. So A-plus for me for I- uh, IKF, no uh, doubt. All right. We move on to Davis Schneider. The incredible Davis Schneider. The incredible Schneider, Ross Atkins to words. To quote Ross Atkins. So in terms of my expectation, yeah, I give him an A-plus. Yeah. Because I didn't expect 100%. him to do this good. As a major league baseball player starting every day, probably a B plus. I mean, his numbers, his average has dropped significantly over the last couple of weeks. He's down to 239. Yeah. But he's the guy that seems to be coming up with the clutch hits in the few games the Blue Jays do win. Uh, let's move on to our eighth Blue Jay. Yeah. I, well, I gave David Schneider a C. Okay. Again, you're just a harsh marker. I am a harsh. Marker. So what we could do is just take what I give him, yeah, and drop it down a grade, yeah, and that's your grade, yeah. Okay, that's what we'll do. All right, all right. So number eight, Kevin Biggio. Kevin, I don't know, boy. I don't know, man. I think the time is up with Kevin. I think he could benefit from playing every day, yeah, and maybe getting into a rhythm to see what he is. But it's tough to be a major league hitter, yeah, when you aren't consistently getting at bats. He has 110 plate appearances where Vladdy and Bo are up over 200. Yeah. So he's only playing half the time. Uh, batting 200 and nine RBIs and two home runs. I have a hard time grading this one because he doesn't get to play enough. But what we've seen out of him, his performance, it's a D. Yeah. You need more. He's like this year's Espinal. Yeah. It's exactly what he is. Yeah, and he was... He was touted as part of the... It was going to be Guerrero, Bichette, Bichette and, Biggio. and Biggio. Yeah. And Biggio never got the uh, playing time or the exposure that the other two have. And I don't know if that's because they feel he's not good enough, and maybe he isn't. Maybe. But I don't know what we do with him. Yeah, I mean, and now we're going to move on to Kevin Kiermeyer. Kevin Kiermeyer, 212. Yikes. These Yee. averages are horrific. And what does he have there? Eight RBIs, one home run. How many doubles has he got? Four doubles. So he's a great center fielder. Yeah. No doubt. And he can run fast and steal some bases. Uh, But overall, Kevin Kiermaier, I was expecting a little bit more. I'm going to throw you a C minus, and Andrew's going to give you a D. Yeah, I didn't write anything down for Kevin. (laughs) Um, Ernie Clement. Ernie Clement. I can't comment on. He's had 100 plate appearances, similar to Biggio. Another guy that they're just kind of trying to fill in. Like, third base is a mess. It is actually a mess, They don't have a third baseman. Matt Chapman has moved on. And incidentally, he's not really hitting for average, but Chapman's hitting quite a few home runs and knocking in quite a few runs. Yeah. We could use that. But no, 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 no. We're defense first. I forgot. No. We don't want runs. Danny Jansen. Danny Jansen. I gave, him um, a, I gave him an A. Yeah, he, he would get an A. He's down to 287. Like, for a while, he was well over yeah. 300. Uh, he's had some clutch hits, specifically home runs, uh, since he's returned from the IL. Again, only played in half the games. Best hitter on the team. So the question is, in term two uh, of the school year, of the Blue Jay year, is he going to keep going backwards, as he has done the last little while, or is he going to go back to where he was when he got off the IL? Yeah. So I would give him an A. Alejandro Kirk. F. I don't even want to. Mr. Kirk, I'm up to failure, man. I don't even want to talk about Kirk because I'm still harmed with the Moreno trade. Me too. And they got rid of the wrong catcher. Clearly. Clearly. Kirk had that couple of months before the All-Star game a couple of years ago that he was on fire. Made the All-Star game. Yeah. And has done nothing since. It is not a good situation for a backup catcher. Hitting 214, 13 RBIs, and a home run. He has four doubles. He does where where does he hit the ball in the park to end up on second? I don't know. Because he is slower than me. Yeah. I'm shocked at the four doubles. But no, I, I, that's a failing grade for Mr. Kirk. You got to pick it up, old man. And the final one, Daniel Vogelbach. I don't know what to say about Daniel Vogelbach. I don't understand the signing. I guess it was no risk, low risk. He came back. He was here before. This is a guy who I can only say they wanted a left-handed bat. Yeah. He has no value anywhere else. He can't play a position uh, on the field. He's just nothing. He's nothing. He's 208. He's a happy guy to have in the dugout. He looks like a lot of fun. 
Uh, in terms of my expectation, he's an A++ because this is what I expected. So he's met my expectation. In terms of a big league roster spot, I don't even want to give it a grade. I think you have to fail. It doesn't even make sense to me. No. At all. At all. So Just... overall, if you're going to rate the Blue Jays as a team from uh, start of the season at the end of March till the end of May, yeah. what is your grade to this point, sir? C. Really? Probably D. I'm going to go D. I'm going D. I'm going D. Borderline. Can you give an E? You can't give an E. Can't give an E? The, no. It's not a total F yet because there have been some bright spots. There have been some, um, like Jimmy Garcia has been, I don't want to say too much about Jimmy Garcia because it seems like he's starting to go down the slope yeah. uh, the wrong way. And some of the starting pitcher, like you say Kikuchi was a great a great story, but his last couple outings he's been, eh. Yeah, like yesterday. What, what about what about Tim Mazza? Because his numbers were nuts last year. Not the Tim Mazza of last year. No. And Jordan Romano has been... Uh, horrific, to the point that if he's coming in to close a game, there's a good chance we're not going to win it. Yeah, but he's on the IL now, as I said, with some elbow stiffness. Uh, so, I don't know. I give him a D, and I really think uh, we said this at the start of the year. This team's going to struggle to be a 500 club. That's exactly right? what they're doing. This is June the second after the June first games. They're three games under 500. Their schedule is about to get a whole lot more difficult. Yeah. So we're going to have to make some decisions. That's true. Are we going to keep just shuffling, scuffling along and maybe get to 80 wins and have a total write off of a season? Or are we going to start some kind of a half rebuild and get some assets and build up our farm system and become competitive again? Because we're a long way from well, competitive. As long as Ross Atkins is here, none of that's going to happen. Is that what you think? That's what I think. <laughs>